Hello and welcome to the second part of the SimHQ DCS Black Shark Preview Series. This is Beach Aviator here and we're going to take a brief look at some of the KA-50 systems today on a short ride around the local area. Alright, we're in the cockpit here, getting ready for engine start. You'll see me uh, flipping switches and uh, this is an abbreviated video by the way. I don't hit all of the systems. You can see me hover the mouse over some of these switches for a brief second to get a tooltip in English that tells me what they do since I'm not completely familiar. Uh, what we just saw there was the battery going on, the fuel pumps. The APU has already started. Getting ready to start the left engine there, looking over at the tachometer, making sure the engine's spinning, running up the uh, fuel condition lever, puts the fuel in the engine, rotor brake is off, and the uh, rotor starts to spin up. All right, now we'll go ahead and close the cockpit door and uh, go ahead and increase the engine to operating RPM. Pulling up on those two levers, we get a low RPM warning there that we go ahead and cancel. And uh, we'll go through various system checks there. We're checking enunciators. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones, and again, this is an abbreviated check. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the APU. Now we're shutting off the APU fuel valve, and uh, then we'll go down to the autopilot control panel. Turn on the autopilot pitch bank and lateral dampeners in the altitude hold mode. On the center pedestal we have the weapons status control panel and the targeting display control panel, jettison controls, and a bunch of other things that I really don't uh, know what to do yet. On the right sub panel we have the PVI 800 navigation control panel. This thing is very complex and capable and ties into the aircraft's inertial navigation system. We've got it set to the normal operation mode and what we'll do today is update our INS position at a couple preset geographic points during our flight. Alright, again, uh, I've glossed over a lot of the pre-flight uh, start checklists and systems checks, but uh, for today's purposes and the shortness of this video, we'll, we'll get rolling. Here we'll uh, roll past the runway. Now we'll also use today the uh, ABRIS moving map, of course. Uh, it's a very powerful system in the K-50. Sorting through the different modes right there. I'm going to zoom in on the map. Uh, Matt's video is far more demonstrative of the uh, capabilities. There you just saw the list of the waypoints. And again, we're going through uh, the flight plan here. Keep in mind this is separate from the inertial navigation system. Uh, this is based on GPS GLONASS satellite, so all of the data we get from that is separate from the inertial system. There you can see I'm scrolling through my flight plan waypoints. And uh, we'll go ahead and start our rolling takeoff time. You'll have to excuse me for my poor flying because I recorded this uh, in real time. I didn't save this as a track and play it back. Uh, I just wanted to sort of go with the flow of things. And uh, There are some parts of this video that are clipped together where I ended up uh, getting distracted and crashing. So you'll have to forgive the lack of continuity in some certain sections. Okay, so we're en route to our first steer point, and uh, the Ekron comes up here with a message to form nav position fix. It's just reminding me that I have a preset INS waypoint coming up soon, and to prepare to update the INS. Um, you can see we're 19 kilometers from that waypoint. So we go down to the uh, control panel down here. Uh, we select the waypoint number one, the actual INS waypoint number one, where we're going to do our update. And what we're going to do is get it in sight and uh, fix our location over that and enter it in there and basically that updates the INS and corrects any errors that have accumulated. There you can see my short stop and I indicate the rotor RPM and you get a warning there. So there's the bridge that I picked as the INS update waypoint. It's uh, simple to see that kind of geographic feature. Now I've entered into the stable hover hold mode as reflected through the HUD and the uh, HSI. The little square in the HUD and the cross on the HSI just indicates how far I've drifted from my stable hover hold position. It's a good uh, way for station keeping. 
particularly when you have uh, internal duties to do, uh, you can sort of let the airplane fly itself. So while I'm hovering here, I noticed that uh, my Abris symbol there is flying across the map at 800 kilometers per hour, and I know that's not the case because I'm in a hover, so I go to my Abris GNSS page and it shows four satellites, and there at the top it says threshold, which basically means that I don't have enough satellites. I'm so close to these mountains that I'm not getting a good satellite signal. So the Abris is going screwy, which just reinforces the reason that you need to have an INS system installed. Uh, there you can see the moving map is sliding all over, even though I'm in a hover. And uh, that was confusing for me. I didn't know about all that stuff, so I turned the Abris off and went ahead and go went back to my inertial system. Like any good pilot, I just figured that uh, I had missed a switch or something. I'm very unfamiliar with this cockpit, so of course I look around and turning the Abris out, off and on. Uh, that's a typical pilot reaction to something that doesn't work. Uh, just reboot it. Uh, and you can see the Abris is rebooting there. Keeping an eye on my fuel level here. Hovering takes up a lot of fuel and uh, just have to keep an eye on it. And, oh, I forgot to test my Ekron warning system earlier, so hit that button. Речевой информатор исправен. So now I'm just waiting for the Abris to come back up and looking around the cockpit to see if I forgot the switch or uh, not put something on. Still have a nav error when it comes back up uh, for obvious reasons. So I go check the uh, GNSS page again and sure enough there's still four satellites there and things aren't looking good. Ah, target. It's a shame I wasn't on a uh, weapons training mission. And sure enough, after hovering in place here for 15 minutes, trying to troubleshoot and exiting out and checking my manual and trying to learn what was going wrong, uh, we're getting the satellite back. There's a fifth satellite there came into view. So I go back into my flight plan and uh, just make sure that uh, I've cycled to the next waypoint since it automatically didn't cycle due to the fact that it didn't know where it was. So now I'm looking at the map there, getting ready to head up on leg two. And another juicy target there running across the railroad bridge. So all right, let's uh, head off to uh, steer point number two. You can see how uh, Familiarization with the systems is going to be particularly important with this sim. Uh, um, I have the luxury of doing all this without a, there being a hostile environment or a wingman to worry about or any tactical situation. So there is a lot to do and a lot to learn, and practice is going to make perfect with this sim. So we're flying up the valley here to the uh, northeast. Uh, the elevation is increasing. You can see the, the terrain here is fantastic for ambushes and uh, tactical considerations. This is going to be a lot of fun to fly in a combat environment. So we're coming up on the lake that uh, I had put my waypoint on for the uh, second leg. Now we'll go ahead and climb up over the, uh, the high mountain pass here in route to the third waypoint. There we have a uh, warning for exceeding the uh, maximum velocity. You can cancel that and the light stays illuminated. Now we're two kilometers from the uh, fourth waypoint. I'm in uh, autopilot mode that uh, allows for route following. You can see it's following it on its own. So now we're coming up on the uh, second inertial waypoint. Again, I've chosen a bridge because those are so easily recognizable. And we're going to come into a steady hover over it. Again, the Ekron is showing uh, to perform the navigation fix, so we go to the uh, INS update waypoint.
2, the INS waypoint 2, and then we hit the uh, Shkval target lock, and that uh, finishes up the INS uh, update. So we'll uh, head on back to base now and bring her in for landing. You can see that uh, navigation capabilities of the K-50 are, are very substantial and they've simulated almost all of it. The ABRIS, the INS, uh, haven't even touched on things like NDB navigation, uh, radio beacons, things of that nature, altering flight plans. Uh, you can alter those uh, INS waypoints in flight. Uh, obviously you can use the ABRIS to a uh, much more maximum capability. Uh, including combat stuff, so uh, we'll hit some of that later on, and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, really short, abbreviated, and uh, not too educational video, and uh, we'll get to some more stuff uh, in subsequent versions of the uh, DCS preview series. Thanks for joining me. Thank <laughs> you.